number 20, 2 Kings chapter number 20, familiar passage of scripture I think for most of you, 2 Kings chapter number 20, we're going to look at the, the story and the life of Hezekiah and uh, we're going to see some things, there's one particular thing that I want to point out from this passage and uh, we'll get to that in just a moment, but there's two places where the light of the the light of Christ should always be shining brightly. Number one is the Christian's home. And then number two is the Bible-believing church. You see, because if the, the light of Christ is shining in the home, it will also be shining in the church. Amen? Because godly churches are made up of godly families. And so we thank God that we have godly families here. And we, we want to make sure that we keep the light of Christ shining brightly. These two places, the church and the home, should be places of refuge for all who believed on Christ. Let me speak today about our homes for just a little bit here. In 2 Kings chapter number 20, if you look there with me, look at verse number 14. 2 Kings 20 verse 14. You see there, the Bible says, Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, what, uh, what said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, they, came, they are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. The question that I want to pose to you this afternoon is this, What have they seen in thine house? What have they seen in thy house? Uh, this was not a complex question that Isaiah posed to Hezekiah. It was a simple question. And remember, Hezekiah was a man that God had already blessed. And he had also given him a second chance at life. Hezekiah was told earlier in the text in chapter 20 uh, that, um, uh, that uh, his time was up. God told him through the prophet Isaiah, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. However, God in his infinite grace responded to Hezekiah's prayer and he changed his plan. And he added a promise of 15 more years of life to Hezekiah. So let's pick up the story in chapter 20 again. Look at verse number 1. The Bible says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. So what do we have in this text? We have several things. Number one, God's grace is magnified in Isaiah's initial message. God gave Hezekiah advanced warning. He said to Hezekiah, you're going to die. Set your house in order. But as we know the rest of the story, he appeals to God for mercy. And God is merciful. And that's a lesson for us as well. We can trust that God is merciful. God is just. He's holy. But he's also merciful. Number three, Hezekiah receives assurance that his prayers uh, have been answered, that God has heard his prayer. How do we know that? Well, because God said to him, I'm going to give you 15 more years. And he receives the promise of, his, of God's protection. You know, when God said, Hezekiah, you're, having, you're going to have 15 more years, what does that mean? Nothing could happen to Hezekiah that was going to take his life in the next 15 years. Because God said, I'm going to give you 15 more years. Nothing he could have done uh, could have taken away those 15 years because God guaranteed it personally for Hezekiah. And then he also put a promise on there for, for Israel as well nationally. 
God instructs Hezekiah to remember him and keep worshiping him. You know, you think about that. For all that God has done and continues to do for us as his children, the only thing he asks is that we worship. Amen? That's not too much to ask. That's reasonable, amen? He would then, Hezekiah would then receive those 15 years. Uh, you're in 2 Kings. Look at verse number 7. The Bible says, Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil. And he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do, do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Now, it's interesting that we're today here on the day that we set our clocks back, amen? Uh, but that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, we're talking about something a lot more significant than that. In verse 7 of our text, Isaiah tells Hezekiah that what he must do to heal his illness. I, I think it's interesting also when you look at that passage that I just read, verse number 7, Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, go to Walgreens and take xylenoclonomifol and you'll get better. He said, no, take a lump of figs. See, I believe the Bible teaches us that, that uh, uh, God gives us doctors uh, for a reason. God uses doctors in our life. But I will say this, doctors sometimes are overused in our life. Amen. Uh, I believe God has made us. We're fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. And we have the ability, in many cases, to heal ourselves from these illnesses that we get. If we'll just take care of the temple. Amen. But anyway, he says, take a lump of figs and lay it on the boil and you're going you're gonna to recover. And that's what he did. Uh, but so uh, when we see verse 7, he tells him what to, do, what to do to be healed. He does it. He's healed. And then Hezekiah asks this question of Isaiah. He says, what shall be the sign? In other words, how, how do I know that all of this is going to happen like you said? What will happen? Hezekiah, he's given a choice. He says to him, uh, shall the sun go back? Uh, should it go forward or shall it go return backward? And, and we know the story. He, he, uh, God brings the dial backwards. He brings the shadow backwards. Now, a couple of things to consider about that. We, 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 we read it and we think, well, yeah, that's no big deal. God can do that. But when you think about what God had to do in order for that to happen, uh, at the equator, the earth is spinning on its axis at approximately 1,000 miles an hour. That's at the equator. The higher you go up or the lower you go down, it slows it down. But at the equator, the middle point of the earth, it's at a thousand, it's on its axis spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. We don't feel it here, standing here right now. We don't feel that we're spinning that fast. So when God sent the shadow on the sundial backwards, what did he have to do? It would mean that God had to stop the earth from spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, stop it dead in its tracks, and then be reverse the direction so that sun shadow would go backwards. Now, spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, it reversed its direction to allow that to go backwards. Folks, that's no small feat. Amen? Especially considering uh, that there's no mention in our text of things falling off of the shelves. When the Lord stops the earth, you know, you don't see things falling over. No mention of that. As a matter of fact, you don't see any mention of any of those things in the text. The only thing that you see in the text is that the shadow returned backwards. No person was disturbed in their daily activity. God miraculously just made it happen. That's the God we serve, amen? That is the God of the Bible. God can do those things. He's the only one who can, by the way. And so all of this stuff you hear about men taking care of everything on earth and making it better is just hogwash. God has everything well in hand. We just need to trust him. How does Hezekiah respond to this 15-year gift of life? God said, you're not going to die now. I'm going to give you 15 more years. Well, let's look and see what Hezekiah did to, uh, to say thank you, if you will. Look at verse 12. 
At that time, and I can't pronounce that name, so I'm not even going to try, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. So what was the answer to Hezekiah's question? What did they see in thy house? What what did these men from afar come and see in Hezekiah's house? You know what the answer is? They saw things. What didn't they see? We see no testimony from Hezekiah about the God of heaven. We see no thankfulness on Hezekiah's part. He didn't say to those men from afar, Hey, listen, you, you, you're not going to believe what God did. I was going to die. The God of heaven told me, you, you're, you're out of here soon. Set your house in order. But yet then he stopped the earth from moving one direction, sent it backwards the other direction, and I've got 15 years now to live. You don't see any of that with these people that visited. What what does that tell us? Hezekiah had his focus on the wrong things. When someone enters our house, what do they see? If somebody comes to your house, what do they see? Do they see Christ? Uh, Is your house one of those houses that's kept? You know, God gives us everything that we own. He gives us the money that we spend on a regular basis. He gives us money to buy the food that we need to feed our families. He he gives us the money to pay the electric bill and all the other bills that come our way. God gives it all to us. He gives us the help that we have to get out of bed and to travel and to do the things that we do. God gives us those things. So when somebody comes to your house, what do we show those folks? Is there any mention of God? Is your house one of those places that's, uh, like I said, that's kept so that when people come in and they see, hey, uh, this is a Christian, and not only is it a Christian, but, but they take care of what God has given them, or is it a dump? Never tidy, never clean. I'm telling you folks, God knows about all those things. And we should be good stewards. So when people come to our home, they should see Christ somehow. Either with our testimony or with the way we take care of things. Do they see scripture verses in plaques on the wall? Or do they see some other crazy picture of something else? See, we can, we can affect all those things if we choose to. So when someone comes into your home, who do they see? Do they see the light of Christ? I said at the beginning of the message, there's two places that the light of Christ should shine brightly. Number one is in the home. And number two is here at the church. Why? Because the church is made up of the homes. If our homes are shining the light of Christ brightly, when people visit our church, they're going to see the light of Christ because it's represented by those that are here. And if their homes are in order, that's going to help the church to be in order. Is our home a place of light? Is it a light of Christ? If it isn't, it should be. You know what's best about God? We can have a terrible day today, but tomorrow's a new, a brand new day. We don't have to take today and carry it over into tomorrow. I remember when I was in sales years ago, the sales manager used to always tell me, you know, when we would have to report our sales for the month and what was going on week to week and so on and so forth. And, and he would make this statement. He said, he said, Glenn, I can, I can understand you having a bad day. He said, as a matter of fact, I can even, expl- I can even, I can even uh, understand how you can have a bad week. But he said, I can't understand how you have a bad month and a bad year. He said, if that's happening, then you've got to change something that you're doing. 
because you're not supposed to carry over bad days after bad days after bad days. Why? Because if you're a child of God, you have the power of God on your life. And you know, a lot of times we just don't ask. We just don't ask for help. You know, we were talking the other day about something. I don't remember what it was, but uh, I, my wife and I were talking and, and she made comment and it was very good. She said, you know, we could change it by just asking God for help. Wouldn't that be wise to do? And that's a simple truth, but it's very, very uh, profound, isn't it? We just need to ask God what we, what we need to do when we're in those kinds of situations. So here in Hezekiah's life, rather than give, uh, give the credit to God for all that he's done in 15 more years, he takes the time to show these, these lost people. We, how do we know they're lost? Well, because they're coming from a place that's evil. Babylon is evil at its core, amen? And so these people coming, Hezekiah had a grand opportunity to show these people that were most likely lost without God. He had a grand opportunity to say, you aren't going to believe what God just did. But he doesn't do that. Instead, he shows them, according to the word of God, my, he calls it my treasures. And the truth is, Hezekiah didn't own any of it. God had just simply blessed him with it. So the lesson for us this afternoon is this. Let's let the light of Christ shine brightly in our homes. How do we do that? Well, the best way to do it is give God the credit for what he does and stop taking the credit to ourselves. Because in truth, we can't do anything without God's blessing. Amen? Let's stand. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you once again for another opportunity that we've had to come. And Father, we thank you so much for being so good to us. We thank you for the good fellowship that we've had today as a church and as a church family. Thank you that we were able to gather downstairs around your, uh, the, the provisions that you gave to us. Lord, thank you for faithful folks who have made this their church home. And Lord, we're asking that you might send some other folks our way, that we too could be a blessing to them. And, and Lord, we have a story to tell the great things that you've done. Lord, help us to be faithful to that mission and that cause that we might be able to be used of you to bring more folks into the cause of Christ. Father, we'll thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen.